Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. There's an ancient proverb. I think it's at Proverbs 27 or or somewhere. Maybe Benjamin Franklin said it. Maybe Aristotle said it, but it's you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it surf. I think that's an ancient Aristotle probably said it. But our guest today is Catholic cowboy priest, Father Bryce Lundgren, and you can lead a Catholic priest to water and he will surf. He was just out here with us uh, this last spring. We're going to talk a story about his new book, The Catholic Cowboy Way. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the... Bear Wozniak adventure. Uh, we have with us today Father Bryce Lundgren. I'm going to ju- just jump right into this interview. Uh, his book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, Finding Peace and Purpose on the Bronx Called Life. And <clears throat> we were talking about just before we started the show, Father, about, by the way, welcome to the show. Thank you. So it's, it's always an honor to get together and catch up a little bit. Yeah, I got to just tell people, when you, sh- when you and Father Joe Paddock showed up here in Waikiki, and you're walking down Waikiki Beach. I, I don't know how tall you are, but you're like that that typical tall, six foot something cowboy. And you're wearing your cowboy hat. And you're walking down, strolling down Waikiki, Kalakaua Avenue with your with your black collar. You know your Roman collar. And people were just uh, like just taken by you guys, and and it, you guys really had this kind of. Uh, Really, people were really struck, and it's just really cool. When it, when it, but now today we see you, Father, and you're, we're, those of you who subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bear Watching Deep Adventure, or subscribe to our newsletter, you get the YouTube version of this radio show. You're in your pickup truck somewhere in Montana. What, what, are you, what store are you in? Where are you? Well, I'm in I'm Wyoming, right? But, uh, I'm in Wyoming. I'm well, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Joe's Montana. Well, so I take Fridays off. I get I get Fridays off when it works out. Most times it does, but I usually hit it hard when I do. So I've got I've got my horses behind me, and I'm blowing out here shortly. And I'm going to catch up with a buddy, and we're gonna we're gonna ride in the in the hills nearby here. You're not so, gonna ride. You're not riding with Zeke, are you? <laughs> <laughs> close, uh, uh, close caliber, yeah, Deacon Joe, Deacon Joe Sandrini, a different Joe. Uh, just in these parts, we're going to catch up and hang out a little bit. Oh God, that's so good! I know you. How how did your how did your ranch do this summer? I know you usually get some know. cattle. Some what are they mm-hmm. yearlings or how old are the cattle that you you raise? Yeah, them? These are the, what I what I pick up in the spring are what's called two year old heifers. They were destined to become mother cows, but that first time of calving, they proved themselves not herd worthy for whatever reason. They yeah uh, lost their calf, no milk, didn't want anything to do with it. So those are the cows I want. I've got my name out to guys, and I usually pick up a free, a few. This year I picked up five. But often I'll pick up twelve. But dang, cattle prices were pretty high this year. So it kind of takes so you raise that you raise them for the meat then. I do. So then I put those two-year-old cows on grass for the summer up in the Black Hills of Wyoming. Boy, oh. just real tall, beautiful grass. Oh yeah. And I bet. I and then I run them for about four months, and I just brought them home, and now I'm walking through butchering them. But I bet over the summer they put on like 400 pounds. Really? <laughs> how, how, yeah, how, big are they? how big are they? They're probably, uh, they're 12 to 1,400 pounds right now. And I've I've got two in the cooler and three on the hook. I, want, I remember when you came out, you and Father Joe, you guys brought steak oh with you. I was like, oh, it was, and it was the best. It was so good. Yeah. So, so um, and I love it the way you, you, you love your cows, you give them all names. Oh, I don't name them. I number them. Yeah, well, but, that's that's what yeah, I asked you what their names were. And you go, oh, oh I, I name them. There's that's number twenty nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do. I just grass fatten them, and that's that's kind of unique. I don't mess. I don't have you know the time or the energy to put into like fatten them with corn or anything. But I just have super luck on on grass fattening them, and it is. It's it's rich. It's rich meat and it's good fatty stuff. So it's fun. It. I always say that really complements my priesthood my vocation it 
it it's a nice it's not a diversion it really it's a re- recharges yes me. and uh so i you know but you keep it in stride and in its place it i've got it dialed in now where i can i can do that for an hour maybe a day or so and then come back into priesthood and so it, it's great. I'm super thankful for that opportunity. Well, well, let's talk about this. You know, when I'm, we got to know each other. I'm just so glad to know you. Uh, and I yeah. said, hey, Father, you got to write a book. I'm going to put you in touch with my publisher. Mm-hmm. And then your book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, it's mm-hmm. a job to write a book like this, isn't it? But it came out, mm-hmm. fa- my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys mm-hmm. Gone, came mm-hmm. out almost a year later. I mean, you got yours done so fast. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, it's such a great read. My wife loves it because, you know, Cindy's a cowgirl. You know that. Yeah. But let, let's talk about your book a little bit uh, well, today. It was a huge gift. And, I mean, I, I knew it was more from the Lord just because I didn't pursue it. It it came uh, via your invitation. Hmm. And so I just, with, with that in mind, I, I was like, okay, I you know, I feel like this is the Lord calling me to do this. And a lot of this stuff, most of this stuff was already on my heart. It was right. already in my mind. And I thought about it. I mean, the outline was was super clear, and and but the actual writing of it, I just wrote it in the chapel in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and I just I just you know a couple paragraphs a day chewed on it, and it really did write itself. But I'm super thankful for the opportunity to to put those thoughts you know onto into concrete words and sentences, and it was just a just an incredible gift. Well, you have a great so way. Of- I'm thankful for it. But you know, I, I love your, your. What's the website again? The what is it called? Oh, yeah. The, I have a blog, and it's called the Cat or Wyoming Catholic Cowboys. Yeah, we love that because there you you have a blog, but you you will share your audio version of your homily uh, homilies, and then uh, pictures of the latest roundup or whatever you're up to as a ran mm-hmm. as a rancher too. And you know, so for us. Um, we use some of your your homilies in our school of manliness. We find something, oh, that fits perfect with this this lesson we're talking about, and we and it was so so cool. But but the the, the way you communicate it, I think that there's God is raising up men in this day uh, mm-hmm. to communicate. Uh, it's this book is for men and women, but to communicate in a way that's gritty enough mm-hmm. that men respond to it. That was I remember when the Lord gave me my mission. About 12 years ago, he said, make it gritty enough so that men are mm-hmm. attracted to it and the women will already be there to yeah. appreciate it. But, you know, I, it was so cool because when you were writing your book and I'm writing mine, your book came out and I had to be careful not to read it. My <laughs> wife did to tell I got mine out. But we ended up with some of the even similar chapters. Like, I think you have a chapter that's all my heroes were cowboys. Isn't that one of your chapters, yeah. something like that? Yeah. Well, what, yeah. Did, what, what is that? What, what are you trying to tell us with that? Mm-hmm. Well, the the basic premise of that of that chapter is we 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 learn from example. We learn by other people's example. That's the way we do growing up. But it never ends. We still have our heroes today who are influencing us for good or ill. You know, mm. it can go either way. Mm. And and so to be mindful, not even just intentional of who we're hanging out with. And then the you know, the ultimate role model is Jesus Christ that when we when we hang out with him, when we follow his example, when we learn from his example in the gospels, and you know, then then we we start to take on his mannerisms, his his way of life. Uh, so he continues to influence us. So that's you know that's the 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 ultimate hero in life. Well, you, know, I, I know for me, uh, Father Bryce. Um, I mean, I was. Uh, I mean, I, I I never was a cowboy. My sisters had a horse that they shared. Uh, my wife was a cowgirl, as you know. Uh, but cowboys, man, that's what. That's all I cared about. I mean, I just wanted to be a cowboy. And and but I love. I mean, I love the westerns. You know, I loved even the little Joe. I think shot and killed sixty one guys and got shot sixteen times himself. I love my Louis L'Amour westerns. You know, I, I I know your brother does too, right? And so I yeah, use. A, there's so much about uh, heroic virtue in those in those westerns, uh, and so I so I love I lo- but but cowboys live by a, a certain code. I remember the first time I interviewed you, mm-hmm. I wanted to draw things out of you, but you mm-hmm. one of the cowboy ways is you know not to talk about yourself, right? It's like <laughs> people can so it's kind of hard the first conversation to draw mm-hmm. you out and let yeah. us hear yeah. your story. But there is a code. What would you say that? What would you say? Uh, what that means? The the the, cow, the way a, cow, mm-hmm. a cowboy is. 
Well, and I don't even know that you, you know, that it's taught per se. It's it's just something that when you're when you work close to nature and creation, there's a there's a kind of a natural code, you know, mm. that just a way of getting along out here and and the way of respecting your neighbors and working mm. together. Mm. I mean, it all translates into life. So, yeah, there are some written codes, but it's not like, you know, you you have to take a test on them when you're growing up. You know, <laughs> but just, it's an- they just they just kind of come. But I but I've heard cowboys will say, well that that's against the cowboy code. I've heard that many yeah. times. So it's it's like it's an unwritten code, but there's it's a code mm-hmm. you live by. We're talking with Father Bryce Lundgren, uh, mm-hmm. in a Catholic priest in Wyoming and we're, we're talking about his new book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, published by Sophia. And we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. My wife always likes me to start out one of our, my segments with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So, uh, Eka, <laughs> Eka Yanoa, Ke Makua, Ke Keiki, Ame Ke Ohana Hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. How did this little band of 12 apostles, man, uh, spread, spread the gospel throughout the world? So even here in the most remotest place in the world, by the way, Hawaii. Uh, that the gospel, the gospel, the gospel thrives here. We're talking with Father mm-hmm. Bryce Lundgren in his new book, The Catholic Cowboy Way. Uh, you know, in here, one of the, way down in the bottom of the chapter, you talk about on to the next one, one of the last chapters. What do you mean by that? Well, it's fun. I mean, the book is fun, but the uh, where that comes from is it's kind of an old rodeo saying that, um, um, you know, I just I I drove 200 miles. I got bucked off in front of a crowd. And I'm turning around and heading to the next one. You know, you gotta, you gotta like intentionally move forward. So the old saying is on to the next one. You know, whether you won, whether you didn't, we're just on to the next one in life. That's the rodeo side of it, but it works so well in life. Man, if you get caught up in, ah, woulda, shoulda, coulda, you know, or if I woulda done this, or if I'm stuck on the glory, oh, that was awesome, you know, we got work to do. We're on to the next one. So that chapter, it, it speaks to that, but really it speaks to how to not get too far behind ourselves, thinking about 
what went wrong or what went right. There's good in that reflection, not getting too far ahead of ourselves of what's coming, but just staying in the middle. And that's a Brock adage as well of just how do I just own the present moment, be peaceful, looking forward and and not not getting stuck in what I could have done and all that. Just learn from the past, move forward. Or what other people did or any victim excuses. Yeah. And the and the one and, and they the, gave me the wrong bronc. They gave me the wrong bronc to ride, and you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah it's it, it, yeah, yeah. Go no, ahead, you Father. can do that. You can do that for sure. And but really, the uh, really the meat and potatoes of that chapter is forgiveness. Forgiveness is how we really move forward in the spiritual life. Is to forgive, to let go, and to move forward. And it's very freeing. You know, I remember once, Father, I was pedaling my bicycle across the United States. And I was going through a heavy, heavy, the desert, it was so hot, it was record-breaking heat. So uh, it would cool down to about 100 degrees at night. But it was up in the one, and the pavement was melting onto my tires. It was a really tough thing. Tough things kind of really get you to the, kind of to the root of things in your life, you know. And I remember pedaling under the moon on a back road in Arizona, uh, heading towards Jacksonville, Florida from San Diego. And... It, it, was, it wasn't very far. I'd only done maybe 500 miles or 600 miles, but it was the toughest part because over the mountains and then through the desert, and I, it just ground me up. And I'd been through a lot in my life, and I just was wondering, like, God, what are you doing wrong? Why mm. is this happening to me? And finally, i got to tell you, at that point, middle of the night on the beautiful star, mm. stars, you know what I mean in Wyoming, how the stars come down right on top of you. And I just heard myself saying, God, I forgive you. Like mm -hmm. I was holding the grudge against God. Okay, interesting. And you're talking mm -hmm. about forgiveness, how you got to, you got to, mm -hmm. don't hold that grudge against God. Like, you know, why are you, why are you letting this happen to me? You got to forgive yourself too. Mm -hmm. Can you oh, talk yeah. to us about yeah. that? Well, yeah. I mean, a couple of things you said there I really like is, um, well, one is, you know, life, it is a, it is a, an adventure. It's a constant journey. And, and often we do find ourselves in those storms, right? It's raining around here right now. But um, so, you know, I've, I've always been like, well, you just got to weather the storm, you know, you got to weather the storm. But anymore, I'm like, you got to ride out the storm. You know, I'm like, you got to pedal through it. Yes, you gotta, I did you that. Work through it. Don't just be <laughs> passive like, oh, I hope this passes. No, ride it out, you know. Wow. Sounds like what yeah. There, yeah. yeah. Well, you actually, yeah, I did hit a, I did hit a storm when I was coming through Texas. Yeah. Tropical storm mm -hmm. Allison came up from the Gulf and then started pushing mm -hmm. me back towards California. <laughs> and I'm driving through the wind and the rain, having to pedal hard just to go downhill. <laughs> wow. But you, but 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 I like that because you just yeah. one more pedal stroke at a time. And, and yeah. but but yeah, let's go back to this example of you saying there's a Bronx term: stay in the middle. What does that mean? Yeah. Well. Um, I mean, the, where it is literally is you just you just own the moment you're in. Like, don't be thinking about the next jump while I'm in one bunk, you know. Don't be thinking about the last buck, what went right or, right or wrong while I'm in this one. Just own the one you're in. So keep your mind in the middle. In the spiritual life, it's, you know, just own the present moment, man. Just be present right here, right now, you know. The next moment will come. We'll deal with it then. I mean, that's that's what you know. The kind of the goal is. I will say one real key there is gratitude. When I'm intentional mm. and grateful in life, I just I'm just opening myself up to the present moment. So the more I intentionally be thankful and have a attitude of gratitude, the more I'm just I'm in the middle of the present moment. So super key. I, I would go back just because you when we're talking about forgiveness a little bit. It's like you know I need to forgive others and even forgive God. I mean, in the sense of like, I'm setting myself free from that resentment or something, not that God does something wrong per se, but right. we're setting ourselves free. So uh, there's goodness in just being, what I always say, raw and real, even to that kind of depth of being mad at God. Well, just own it. I mean, you don't have to take a literal and, and fuel that fire, but just own, I feel that way and, and relate it to God. That's good. But as you mentioned, like forgiving ourselves and I and that's tough duty. And I know there's plenty of people and I've been down that road of how do we do that? And I, I can't 
necessarily say how we do it except through the knowledge of, hey, God has forgiven us. Is If God has forgiven us, I should be able to forgive myself because I have been forgiven. Mm. Now, what I would say that does help is listening to the right voices. So God is not the accuser. The devil's the accuser. God's our advocate. All right, so my deal is, and a lot, a lot of this is just kind of mental toughness, discipline, stand back and name who is it that's speaking to me? Whose voice is it that I'm listening to right now? And if you just stand back, and I would just caution any voice that begins with you, I would watch out for. You're not, you should have, you did this, you didn't do that. Those are accusations. That's not the voice of God. Watch any voice that begins with you. That comes from without us, and it's accusatory, not the voice of God. The key to tuning into the voice of God is tuning out of all the other voices. So watch the use. Now, I'd also say we're pretty good at accusing ourselves. That voice begins with, I, I did, I'm not, I should have, I would have, I should, whatever, you know, on down the line. I would watch any voice that begins with I too. There's a place for it. But if that voice is beaten on me, it's not the voice of God. So I want to tune into the voice of God who sets me free. So to do so, I watch, I turn out, tune out of the use, I tune out of the eyes. And then I let the voice of God speak to me from within who calls me by name. That's so cool. And you know, the, there's also another another voice. It's it's our it's the victim in us that mm -hmm. wants to say, well, he did this, she did that, they did that, the society does yeah. this, the society relegates <laughs> men that women have taken over the church. That mm -hmm. that's that blame blameless and blameful attitude. And you know what? It doesn't work on a bucking bronco, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stay just, in the middle. <laughs> holding on for dear life. No good stuff. It teaches us a lot. So, I, I, um, I love, I love, I love mm -hmm. that. Just love that. We're talking mm -hmm. about Father Bryce Lundgren, and his book is uh, "The Catholic Cowboy Way," and I just love it. My wife's sitting in here. She normally, she really can't hear you very much, but she can hear our the conversation mm -hmm. we're having. My wife, cowgirl, the cowgirl Cindy, uh, trick writer Cindy, uh, barrel writer Cindy, just lo just loves your book too. The Catholic Cowboy Way. In, in, a, in the next minute, can you just tell us briefly what it means to ride for the brand? It's the title of one of my chapters, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. You stole mm -hmm. it from me, even though you, your book came out yeah. first. I know. Well, that was some <laughs> of the impetus to get it done before yours. So I could, my, my, <laughs> <here>. <laughs> no, it's fun to see how, you know, how those, the, you know, there is a oh, kind of a movement going on, you know, that, yeah. that people hunger for this, this reality. And well, writing for the brand, it, it's a, it's an image that encompasses a lot. It does go back to that cowboy code you speak of. of and I would say, I mean, it ultimately marks loyalty to um, whoever I'm working for, you know, that it's a, it's an image that allows me to, to sacrifice to get the job done. It's an image of security, honestly, that I'm part of something bigger than myself. Wow. And I'd say Jesus, Jesus rode for the brand. And in a metaphorical sense, but even in a in a more of a figurative sense, that the the cross, I would say the cross was kind of his brand. Like mm -hmm. he talked about it all the time. He had it, you know, he used it in different contexts. Like, I mean, us out west, we got brands all over the place. I got it on my pickup. I got it on my belt buckle. You know, I mean, it's it's way more than just something you put on the side of a cow, even though that's its place. Uh, it it identifies who we are and who we work for allows us to be loyal but then peaceful as well for you know the security that comes from who i who i run with it's so cool we're talking to father bryce lunger in his new book the catholic cowboy way uh i'm bear wozniak we'll be right back with the bear wozniak adventure this is dan laboon markham with another episode of country up humility lots of folks equate humility with weakness true there is false humility, which can be just another name for downright cowardliness or shiftiness. But true humility takes a unique sort of courage, takes self-control. In fact, in the original language of the New Testament, the base word for humility means controlled strength. It goes like this, I have the right and the power to enforce being bright, but I choose to be otherwise. It takes real restraint, especially when emotions get revved up. I've learned for the most part to tame reacting 
to my emotions. The hardest for me is to exercise restraint when I see a bully in operation, like giving a waitress ill treatment. Gets my dander up serious bad. Now stop and consider how God did it. The all-powerful, present, everywhere, and all-knowing God chose to come to us in the form of a frail human body that got tired, got hungry, and sweated drops of blood, even allowing himself to be beaten and pinned to a cross when he could have called legions of angels to his rescue. Had to tell his boys who wanted to call down fire from heaven that fire and destruction were not the way to respond when having a sense of being wronged. The rugged John the Baptist, you know, he was a true warrior, had a warrior spirit. Yet John the Baptist said of Jesus, he must increase, and then of himself, I must decrease. Not many of us willing to sacrifice our power and position. It takes a real man to be humble, it takes sacrifice, self-restraint, and courage. In God's economy, humility is hot, and unbridled pride and passion are not. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, I want to invite everybody to go to uh, Amazon.com or your local Barnes & Noble or my website, deepadventure.com local Catholic bookstore. Get my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And while you're there, get Catholic Cowboy Priest Father Bryce Lundgren's book, The Catholic Cowboy Away. He's our guest today. But get my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, and, and Father Bryce's book, too. Because uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Women, you know you're the ones that buy these books. Buy these books. Get them into the hands of your men. You can go on Amazon, and it can be direct shipped to them. Uh, but get these books into the hands of the men in your lives. And I also think, uh, read them, especially Father Bryce's book, The Catholic Cowboy Way. It's for both men and women. But it has a gritty voice that men can attune to. And my book, too, I think my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, is something young women should read so they really understand what a real man is. It's something single moms can read to their sons. These books are something that men can read to their sons uh, so and can they read together in small men's groups. So uh, both of these books came out, are published by Sophia, The Catholic Cowboy Way by Father Bryce Lundgren, my guest, and 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, uh, inspired by my wife, Cindy. Uh, so, so Father Bryce, uh, we're, we're talking a little bit more about writing for the brand, and I agree with you. I think the brand, Jesus' brand, is is the cross, and it's the, and it's the brand for for Christians today, but but what, like when you guys walked down the street here, you and Father Joe and Waikiki wearing your Roman collars, people knew what brand you rode for. Mm -hmm. But how about for the every, everyday person that isn't wearing that collar? How do they make, how, do, how is it that people come to understand, mm -hmm. oh, that guy, that woman, they ride for the brand of Jesus? Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, as our Lord says, and we use often, you can tell a, a tree by its fruit, right? Mm. They so think, what what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? The fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. 
there's a few others. So I think if if our lives are producing those fruits, they tell us something about the root. So if I'm, you know, in 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 society, if people as they get to know me, they see, wait, man, he's peaceful, he's joyful, you know, he's self giving, on down the line, you know, those virtues stand out because they don't they're not terribly natural in society and maybe today more more so i don't know but okay so hey there's something different with this guy's life and what is it and it's christianity so you know along those lines i i think we i mean i can wear the collar and and you know be an idiot and it goes the other way you know i mean so it's ain't nothing magical about clerics themselves but but I think it's more about the fruit that's produced in our life, uh, especially peace and joy. That's attractive. And that's a theological virtue. And we talk about justice, self-mastery, prudence, and fortitude. But the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love that Paul mm-hmm. talked about, that is something that's infused by the Holy Spirit. You know, it's, it's what mm-hmm. does, it, they, they used to it set us apart. They used to say the early, in the early, early days of the church, see how they love each other. You know, the, mm-hmm. the love that they wow. have for each other. What does Amen. it mean? Okay, well, speaking about that, so now let's talk about, um, I'd like to talk with you about discipleship and also how that relates to needing brothers and brothers in your life, you know, how, how we disciple each other. But your chapter on discipleship. Yesterday we celebrated the Feast of St. Matthew, and our, our church here in Gillette is, is St. Matthew's Parish. So I love the call of St. Matthew because our Lord simply just walks by the custom table sees Matthew sitting there and says two words, follow me, right? So those are those are super powerful words that uh, that are really the universal call for all of us. Whatever our big vo- V vocation is, that is our that is our real vocation is to follow Jesus, right? To uh, you know be his disciple. I always say Matthew was a, a disciple before he was an apostle, right? Mm. I'm a I'm a disciple before I'm a priest in a in a real sense. So that's the I, in the book I call it the perennial vocation for all of us, from the time we're baptized to the time we you know they lay us in the ground. We're called to be disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. So anyway, what does it mean to follow? I like to define things. What does it mean to be a disciple? And I say discipleship is following the voice of God in my heart. So Jesus is not an imaginary friend. He's not just out there as an idea. The dude dwells in my heart through his Holy Spirit, and he continues to guide me in the Holy Spirit. So discipleship is personal, right, in the sense of like it's me following Jesus. But as you say, it's not It's not just a strictly just a me and Jesus thing. It is, in its essence, me following his Spirit, but I need brothers to help me on that journey. And I mean, our, our Lord saw, but I, I mean, I live by it today. I mean, whether it's yourself or people around here, um, this is a this is a real uh, feature that we need each other. Iron sharpens iron to help us in our walk for life with Christ. So, yeah, in, in a nutshell, I you know, that's it. I would say the discipleship is following that voice in my heart, voice of God in my heart. And, and confirming that with what we know to be the truth through the Catholic teaching in the Scripture um, mm-hmm. to help discern that voice as well. The thing is, to think about this, Father. I've often thought about this. Here, mm-hmm. Here's John and mm-hmm. Peter and Matthew, and they're hanging out with Jesus, and then they're the, wor- you know, the worst thing they can imagine happens. He's crucified. Mm-hmm. And then they see him, and he's risen from the dead. And then he's taken up to heaven. Think about mm-hmm. it, what it was like at the moment when they're, Jesus is gone, he's, he's, uh, he's ascended to heaven, mm-hmm. and they're getting up in the morning, and they're going to do the morning prayers, and they go like, is that you, Jesus? Mm-hmm. You know, they, they hear his voice in, in their hearts. Mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. profound and beautiful is that? The moment that that changed from yeah. when Jesus really took residency in the temple of their heart, and they could follow Jesus by, the, mm-hmm. by that still, small voice. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, it's even... I mean, in a sense, it's even better than him walking on earth, right? Because I, I mean, there's good, and there's awesomeness in that being able to hang out with the guy and learn from him and stuff. But I mean, there there's times where he's in the other room. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, right. there's there's times of distance, 
Uh, but when he dwells in my heart through the spirit, like that doesn't fade away. You know, that's, that's eternal is perennial. And, and so there's, there's almost even a more of a goodness there. Uh, you'd be nice to see and sense with our physical senses, but I think that spiritual reality, it's even deeper and even more. Yes. Bigger. You know, and the, the early church fathers said that, um, humans were amphibians. Uh, they, they, and they, what they meant was that uh, when God made, gave us a, a, a human, th this flesh, this animal body, you know, uh, like other mm -hmm. animals, but he infuses in us a spiritual, rational soul mm -hmm. that could commune with God. So we're mud and we're heaven. We're amphibious. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but we really don't come into that, that life of that, you know, until we have the Holy, we, Jesus, we're baptized and we receive the Holy Spirit yeah. into our lives. And then we live in a whole different dimension. You know, there's there's always this moment. There's there's you know, it's like remember when Jacob uh, wrestled with God in the desert. Mm -hmm. He duked it mm -hmm. out with God, mm -hmm. and in the end, God punched him right in the hip. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, he walked with a limp. But he also mm -hmm. had a new name. It wasn't Jacob anymore. It was Israel. Mm -hmm. And I, that's kind of like you know, I went through that. I got punched in the hip. I tore that muscle loose. You know, I'm. I'm surfing my canoe uh, and I walk a little I feel a little bit of you know I had to be reattached I have a little bit of pain now uh, every time I take a step but the thing about it is every time that happens I think yeah that's like that's like Jacob he mm -hmm. he he didn't just walk anymore he had a little hesitation when he walked I mean, I'm not trying to say is he would say I'm gonna check in with you God I'm gonna check in with you God I mean, there's a little he walked with a what do you call that a hitch in his step mm -hmm. you know that, that he's paused you, you when you have that you pause and you think Lord, I've wrestled with you my whole life, but now I'm just going to cling to you. Show me the way. Show me the path for my life today. We're talking with Father Bryce Lundgren. Uh, tell us again where they can get your book and the name of the book. Oh, it's, it's the, the name of the book is The Catholic Cowboy Way. It's put out by Sophie Institute Press, and that's a good starting point. You can get it anywhere, I suppose. They are There, there is a Kindle version, and they were uh, talking about doing an audio version. You should. I told them, yeah, you I should said, read that, it. That, yeah, I thought of that. It needs um, to be your said, voice. That'd be, that'd be great if they did an audio version, because then my brother would read it. Well, men are like that. You know, I'm about <laughs> to do. A, I'm going to get my audio version done before yours. My goal is to get mine done in the next month. But yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, do you listen to Audible books? I sure do. I listen to a lot to Audible books. Um, I I have. I enjoy them. I I don't. It's not something I do on a regular basis, but well, it's your, good. Your uh, your website is what again? WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. And you can go there and just listen to all these beautiful five-minute homilies. They're just great. Great way to start your day. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel.
still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure where we want to invite the Mama Bears to go to deepadventure.com and become part of the Mama Bears. And uh, for the men, go there and be, join the man cave. Become part of the school of manliness. We use a lot of Father Bryce Lundgren, my, co- my guest today, a lot of his homilies right in our school. We just plug his homilies in that fit certain areas. So we have, right now we have about uh, 30 months worth of curriculum on manliness. And we as men go through one of those lessons every month with our Zoom calls. And, uh, and uh, there's audio and video and written content. Some of it is uh, based on my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? But then what's really cool is the men are getting, um, uh, you, know, cre- you know, login credentials for their sons uh, so they don't become members of the man cave because they're not adult, but the fathers use those credentials so the sons, can, they can lead their sons through the curriculum. And I don't know if any, anyone else that does that where the fathers can 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 uh, do that and uh, you can you know go go through the school with your sons but this book by father bryce Lundgren, the catholic cowboy way and my book 12 rules for manliness where have all the cowboys gone they're both written in very readable way i think father bryce's is much more readable than mine actually it's a beautiful book and you can go through that with your with your with your your children or with your sons and you single moms it's a great way for you to uh, have impact on your uh on your on your sons too father bryce is with us father bryce what does it mean i i had this uh written down here uh go fishing Mm -hmm. your chapter Mm -hmm. on going fishing yeah that's a fun chapter yeah it's you know so much of the spiritual life is it's really it's kind of it's not linear you know it's kind of more circular so there's never a, a a goal that i've crossed that i've arrived except for death but it, it always kind of comes back to itself. So go, going fishing is a way of, and spiritually speaking, in a sense, I'll tell more about it, but it's a way of always kind of returning to the source, to being recharged, reinvigorated, and so I can handle the other aspects of life. So, uh, you know, often, so I the, the opening example, which I, I, I like, speaks a lot. It's very simple. I run into my cousin one day who he farms full time, and I said, "Hey, man, what you been up to?" And I'm I'm expecting, um, you know, super busy, just working. Those are your kind of common responses to that. So I say, "Hey, Clint, what you what have you been up to?" He says, "Oh, I've been fishing for sauger." I was like, "Okay," in the midst of being super busy and working all the time, what's on his mind? Fishing. He enjoys fishing. So it's so easy to to just let work own us into like when you go and run into somebody that all you do is talk about work, you know, and it's Uh, a sign that you're just, you're wrapped around the axle, dude, like back up. And, but you got to take time to do this stuff in order for it to have an effect on my life. So to take time to recreate, you know, to take time to ponder life, those are good things on a regular basis. But I will say the heart of that chapter is Sunday. Like our Lord built this into our week right and he knew how busy life can get and he knew if he didn't command it we wouldn't take it right Mm. so he commands this sunday obligation not just to go to mass but to uh, to refrain from servile labor those things that prohibit the sanctification of the day sunday is heaven on earth and it's not i just sit in the church all day it is good to go to mass to worship the Lord, to receive him in Holy Communion, but then to enjoy the day, to go fishing, I don't know, to uh, hang with family, stuff like that. If I do that on a weekly basis, all of a sudden my my perspective isn't the grindstone. My perspective is heaven. It's all that enjoyable stuff. And then I can endure and with great effect and joy my responsibilities in life, such as work and occupation vocation things like that that's so cool i think that's one of my biggest downfalls is is and i think maybe it's true of most men is work um is is there's such great dignity in work god jesus Mm -hmm. is working right now jesus said even now the Mm -hmm. father and i we work Mm -hmm. Uh, and so but i have 
uh, with being a CPA and a TV show and a radio show and writing, um, you can get caught up in that. And yep, someone so, someone asked me the other day, what is your what is the one weakness you're working on overcoming? And for me, it is basically to to walk away from that on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And so he's well, I'm doing the Lord's work, so I should I can do, you know. Yeah. And the other thing is, I what I do is I find now, um, you know. Um, Around ten thirty, I get up and I do my my beach walk and I go swim for an hour. You know, Father Joe came out. Remember how you would swim early mm-hmm. in the morning? I'm yeah. not like him. I go out into the deep, uh, little, a really beautiful deep spot here where the waves break almost, but you're not being swept by them. And I and I tread water for an hour, and it's luxurious oh for God. me. And I, Cindy will come out with me sometimes for a half hour, but that's the time when I I pray I pray the rosary. I I I talk to God the Father. One day I might just be focusing on the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's Jesus, but I. But that's my, that's my, kind of oasis in the middle of the day, to spend mm-hmm. time with the Lord. In the morning I'll get up. I'll read the Office of Readings, from the liturgy, or maybe go to morning mass. But that 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 moment now has become like sacred to me, and yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning for Sundays. I can go to the beach. I can read. A, you know, Cindy and I go play golf, listen to country western music or something. You know, in the afternoon, it's, I'm learning yeah. how to learning how mm-hmm. to give myself permission to, you know, what I mean, go fishing. Yeah, it's, it's good. And and what I like about that is like, um, I'm not a fisherman. Like, I actually don't enjoy fishing. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the the idea is like find your your personal fishing hole. Mm-hmm. Like yours is you know the waves stuff like that. I I super enjoy all my horses and and um didn't just kind of branch outdoor stuff you know but but where, wherever your your fishing hole is that where i can just naturally recharge my relationship with the lord that breaks from the hustle and bustle and just personally encounters him on a on a human level mm. you know i know jesus he had this cave he liked to pray in. the tradition tells us on the north shore of the sea of galilee beautiful mm. kind of like a half yeah. cave a big, big cave, and he would, uh, and that's where he taught. They say he taught his disciples the Our Father, and Jesus mm-hmm. would often get away. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and he didn't heal. Uh, you know, he he could have been spending all day long healing the sick. You know, mm-hmm. but he, he got away, and he spent that time recharging. And you know, I don't know about it, what it is like. You know, one of the things about cowboys is there's a, there's something about a cowboy where he has a lot of solitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and bikers have that. Surfers have that. Mm-hmm. We paddle out, we, and, and when even even when there's a bunch of people around you when you're surfing, you're alone. And you have that mm-hmm. time to just kind of let your thoughts, uh, let the thoughts kind of unwind till you get back to the place of just saying yes, Lord. You know. Yeah. Well, in that chapter too, I talk a lot about the art of pondering. Mm. That I, I mean, I and and that's what really a lot of the you know the. Uh, the cowboys in their solitude, the bikers in their solitude. That's what you're making space for is pondering. Yes. And pondering really yes. doesn't take effort. The only effort it takes is to not reach for my cell phone when I have those few spare moments of stillness. Like you don't need to distract yourself. So whether it's five minutes or it's 30 minutes on a ride um, or a couple, even a minute. But what I do is just don't don't engage something that's distracting exteriorly my cell phone or even those thoughts that just are rabbit trails but just sit there still and then my heart speaks my heart percolates and it informs my mind and like oh and then i sift through it you know you chew on it that's like ruminating right it's a perfect way to say it yeah but it but it does it's not it's really not it's effortless god speaks you know oh wow and i mean it's it's in a natural way but it's very real way. So you know, it's a you know, my wife Cindy, I know Mary says that she pondered these things in her heart. But my wife Cindy, yeah. I learned right away from her. I would ask her a question or I'd bring something up, and mm-hmm. she would ponder, and it mm-hmm. might be a day or two or a, a week or ten days, and then all of a sudden we're taken walking out of nowhere. She just has this wisdom, or these mm-hmm. insights, or these thoughts. Mm-hmm. Some of it is funny sketches in our TV show or but like the other day we have this we 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 know we went to we went to the Virgin Islands we got our captain's licenses for sailing this is something that we knew was the Lord's will then when we were there the Lord just opened up the door and said here's your boat buy this boat and he provided it for us in a way that 
was really, I don't know how to say it, but effortless. There was no, uh, and, and we're chartering it when we're not using it, so it doesn't cost us anything. You just say, here's your boat. And then people say, what are you going to do with it? Well, first we had to come up with what the name of the new of the boat would be, and we we pondered it and we pondered it, and I said, let's just keep pondering and tell you know you know when it's right. It just come, took mm -hmm. us a couple of months, mm -hmm. and then two days ago I said, Cindy, what's our boat's name? We need to tell the Coast Guard, and she said, let's call it Spirit of Adventure. And when she said mm -hmm. that, because I already had the scripture verse through pondering, I had the scripture mm -hmm. verse: those that are led by the Spirit are like the wind. Oh. And so so then there's the Spirit of yeah. Adventure. And we knew that was right. So, and now they'll say, well, "What are you doing with it?" Well, we don't know. The only thing we know right now is we're going to go sail for three months in the in the Caribbean, or a couple months. And we invited Father Joe and Father Bryce to come sometime. That's all we know. That not that you guys will even come. That's all we know right now. Now we need because we just got the TV show done, just got the book done. It's time to ponder now. We're not going to just jump into the next thing. We need to ponder. Yeah, and then when the ho then the Holy Spirit whispers you, sometimes with men He gives you a big shove too. But normally it's <laughs> normally it's a little nudge. Okay, yeah. wrap this thing up. We got to go. What what's the last words of wisdom you'd give us from uh, Wyoming, uh -huh. Father Bryce Lundgren? <laughs> well, where am I at today? I I I have I am kind of in that that weathering the storm kind of or or, or riding out the storm is kind of my my mo because it's it's just not easy and even you know visiting beforehand of the trials in life they teach you something but they prepare you for the next one so to just not be discouraged by the struggle and the storm but just ride through it god is continuing to do good things in the midst of it yes and and the more the more i go through the more i can learn to enjoy the ride in the midst of it even if it's not easy so yeah, if you want to chew on something, uh, ride out the storm. Ride out the storm. That's so cool. Father Bryce Lundgren, his book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, published by Sophia. My same, my publisher of my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You should get them both. Send them, you can use them like bookends. Father, thanks for being with us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.